Hey, my dear Brightsiders, I've got a nice riddle challenge for you. I know you've been waiting. Set everything you've been doing aside. Yeah. Your detective skills are needed. Long ago, an evil witch kidnapped three married women and turned them into rose bushes. One of the women, who had children, begged the witch to let her see her family, and the witch agreed. She took the woman to her home for one night and turned her back into a rose bush the next morning. The witch had no idea the woman's husband had followed her back because he wanted to save his wife. He looked at three identical rose bushes and suddenly realized which one was his wife. How? The rose bush his wife had been turned into didn't have any night dew on the leaves. A woman called the police to report that her grandmother's ring had been stolen. When a detective came to her house, she saw shards of broken glass on the ground and dirty footprints. But instead of looking for the thief, she arrested the woman who had made the call. Why? If someone had indeed broken into the house, the shards of glass would have been inside the house not outside. As for the window, it was broken from the inside, most likely to stage the robbery. A man called his wife from the office and said he would be home by 8. He arrived home at 2 minutes past 8, but his wife was very angry because of his late arrival. Why? The wife thought the man would be home by 8 p.m., but he came home at 8.02 a.m. A small shop in New York is called Seven Bells, but there are eight bells hanging outside. The store owner can easily correct this mistake, but chooses not to. Why? Initially, this was indeed just a mistake. But over time, the store owner noticed that people often came inside to point out the inconsistency, and this started to increase his sales. A queen had a bowl of golden apples, which were her most treasured possession. One day, one of the apples went missing. Oh no! She gathered all the members of the court in the throne room and told them she knew how to find the thief. Each of them had to touch a rusty pot with a rooster inside while the lights were off. The rooster would crow when the criminal touched the pot. Strangely, the rooster didn't crow throughout the whole procedure. Despite this, the queen knew who had stolen the apple. How did she figure it out? By touching the pot, the members of the court ended up with rust on their hands. But the thief was too scared to touch the pot in case the rooster crowed, so they didn't have any rust on their hands. A rich man named James Leonard was attacked in his house on a Sunday afternoon. These people were in the house at that time. The maid, the cook, the butler, the gardener, and James's wife. They gave the following statements. The maid said, I was laying the table. The cook told the police, I was cooking breakfast. The butler said, I was polishing silverware and dishes. The gardener added, I was planting tomato seeds. And the wife said, I was reading a book. So. Who attacked Mr. Leonard? It was the cook. You don't cook breakfast in the afternoon? Dennis is a talented architect. He's designed a unique skyscraper, and the construction works were about to start. His boss asked the guy to show around a group of specialists from a competitor company. The only condition was that they weren't allowed to take any photos. Dennis did as he was told, but when the group was going to leave, he asked the security to detain one man. The architect claimed he had been taking photos during the tour around the site. How did he understand it? The man was carrying an umbrella. He kept pointing it at different objects asking lots of questions, but the sky was cloudless. What did he need the umbrella for? A camera must be hidden there. Two men are going to fill their watering cans with water from the river. 
Who will bring more water? The spout of the older man's watering can is situated lower than the spout of the other man's can, and the level of water can't be higher than the spout. It means the younger man will bring more water. Mrs. Smith claims that her neighbor, Mrs. Miller, has stolen her laundry. The woman says she hung the laundry in her backyard at 10 a.m., and when she went out of the house two hours later, she saw Mrs. Miller putting it in her bag. I didn't do this, it's a lie, the other woman replied angrily. The detective investigating this case asks Mrs. Smith to go to the police station for trying to slander her neighbor. How has he figured out that Mrs. Smith is lying? It's freezing outside and there's snow on the roofs. In two hours, damp laundry would be so frozen it'd be impossible to fold it and put it in a bag. Look at this group of people and try to figure out who the man's wife is. It's the woman in purple. Both she and the biker are wearing matching wedding rings. Detective Morris decided to have a meal at a cafe, but as he came closer, he saw a crying lady. I was going to cross the road when some woman grabbed my purse and disappeared. I noticed her entering this cafe. Can you help me get my things back? The detective entered the cafe. Ah, that's my purse, right between those two women, but I can't recognize the one who took it. I didn't have enough time to look at her attentively. Morris didn't need much time to figure out which woman was guilty. It's the one on the right. The woman on the left has her left arm in a cast. If she had taken the purse, she'd have put it on the right side of herself. Joan took part in an experiment testing her logical thinking and analytical skills. The girl was locked in a small room. The door was supposed to open automatically once she figured out the riddle written on a piece of paper. Which principle is this sequence based on? 8549176320. The numbers are lined up based on the alphabetical order of the first and second letters of their names. Eight, five, four, nine, and so on. Hannah called her friend, Detective Evelyn Marks, and asked her to come as soon as possible. While the woman was away walking with her dog, someone got into her house and stole her laptop. Hannah was sure it was her neighbor, Jeremy. Evelyn went to question the man, but he wasn't at home. She decided to wait for him in her car since it was raining. Soon, she saw Jeremy opening his entrance door. I went fishing early in the morning. Don't you see that I've just come back? But the detective didn't believe Jeremy and took him to the police station. Why? The guy is wearing white sneakers. But it's been raining since early morning. If he was out fishing, how can his shoes look so clean? Detective Taylor was chasing a dangerous criminal. Suddenly, the man entered a hospital, but there must be hundreds of rooms there. Luckily, it was raining, and the criminal left footprints on the floor. The detective followed them and got into a small room. There were three people there. All of them were covered in bandages from head to toe. But one of them was a fake patient. Who? It's the man in the middle. He doesn't have a medical chart next to his bed. Look at these pretty fish. One of them is different from the rest. Which one is it? This one in the middle. Its eyes are slightly bigger than those of the others. On a cold winter day, a man was standing in front of someone's house. He didn't move or say anything until the spring, and the owner didn't mind. Who was this man?
It was a snowman. During one of his experiments, a crazy scientist gives a group of people two pills, one safe and one poisoned, with some water to wash it down. They can choose one of the pills, so their chances are 50-50. Strangely, all people get poisoned and have to be rushed to a hospital. Can they all be so unlucky? All the pills were okay. The poison was in the water. The following riddles will put your attention and quick thinking to the test. Look at this rebus riddle. Mill and lion. Can you figure out what it means? It's one in a million. Now we've got this image. It's filled with room, room, room. Can you find the odd word? Yep, there's a boom among all those rooms. James is carrying a barrel that weighs 60 pounds. What can the guy add to it to make it weigh 40 pounds? All James needs to add is a hole. Find the number that doesn't belong here. Right you are. 280 is different from all these 208s. Can you figure out what's wrong in this picture? Roses don't grow on the seafloor. The same picture, but the mistake is different this time. Spiders don't live underwater. But then, where did this spider web come from? How can you pop a balloon with a knife without it bursting or losing air in the process? Deflate the balloon first. Only after that, stick the knife through it. How can you take one from 19 and get 20? You can easily do it if you use Roman numerals. See for yourself. Quarantine minus I equals sign X sec. Adam added 6 to 11 and got 5. And it was the correct answer. How is it possible? It's correct if we talk about time. It's 11 a.m. If you add 6 hours, it'll be 5 p.m. It took a witch eight years to finish digging the deepest well in the world. Every next year, she managed to double its depth. How many years did it take the well to reach half of its maximum depth? Seven years. If the witch doubled the well's depth every year, it had to be half its final depth the year before it was completed. You need to get into your rival's computer, but it's password protected. The only hint you have is a note you found hidden under the keyboard. One mouse, three books, two boards, one night, four balls, two lighters, one girl, one hall, three watches. Can you figure out what the password is? It's moonlight. The number in front of each word refers to the corresponding letter of this word. A treasure hunter finds a chest filled with gold and jewelry in a cave on a distant island. There are three keys next to the chest. Red, blue, and gold. Only okay. one of them can open the chest, and the treasure hunter has only one attempt to choose the right key. On the wall, he sees a bizarre inscription. TGK, Ho, Ely, Den. Can it help him pick the correct key? The man should choose the gold key. 
if he rearranges the letters in the inscription, he'll get the golden key. Three men were swimming in the sea. The weather was getting worse, and a coast guard asked them to leave the water. But when they got back to the shore, only two of the men had wet hair. Why? The third man was bald. Srows are flying in the sky, one ahead and two behind, one behind and two ahead, one between two and three in a row. Can you figure out the exact number of crows? Three. They're moving one after another. Barista needs to fill two sacks with coffee from another sack of a similar size. Can you figure out how to do it? Easy. Put the empty bags into one another and then fill them with coffee. Two mothers and two daughters enter a coffee shop and order three cappuccinos. Each gets one. How's that possible? They are a grandmother, a daughter, and a granddaughter. Can you write a number that consists of 11 thousands, 11 hundreds, and 11 digits? Many people think it will be 111,111, but in fact, it's 12,111. Rachel's computer gets broken, but she has to do urgent work. So she decides to use her husband's laptop instead. But unfortunately, he has changed the password. Luckily, Rachel finds a note with a clue nearby, SBDIFM. She enters the code, but it doesn't work. Can you help her crack the password? To solve this puzzle, Rachel needs to change each letter with the previous letter in the alphabet. S implies R, B implies A, D should be replaced with C, and so on. And the final password is Rachel. Aw, oh, so yes. cute. Peter, Jenny, and Timothy are trapped in three separate cages. Peter's cell has an explosive in it. Jenny's cage is filled with toxic gas. And Timothy's cell is covered with ice. Can you guess who has more chances to survive? Timothy. It's just ice, so it's gonna be melting soon. Timothy won't have time to freeze. Yeah. Gerald is 100 years and a few months old, but he only had 25 birthdays in his entire life. How could this be? The man was born on February 29th, so his birthday only takes place once every four years. The police find out that several criminals are going to leave the city by train this morning. Security guards at the railway station detain four suspicious people and examine their baggage. Can you help them figure out who's innocent? This guy carries toothpaste without a toothbrush. Oh. A supposedly blind person carries a flashlight. Oh. And why would a bald man need a bottle of shampoo? Ooh. It seems only the guy on the left isn't a criminal. Birds sat one on each tree. One didn't have a place. But when they sat two on each, one tree was left free. Can you figure out the number of birds and trees? Four birds and three trees. A farmer has 350 oranges. Hmm. The challenge is to divide them into three piles so that one pile would be four times smaller than the largest one. And another pile, two times smaller than the largest one. How many apples would be in each pile? Zero. The farmer has 350 oranges, not apples. David invites his friends to spend a weekend at his house. They come along and have tons of fun. Unfortunately, a terrible storm starts the day before they have to leave. It's pouring with rain, and strong winds are breaking trees, tearing down power lines, and causing power outages all over the place. 
The next morning, the weather gets better. But David discovers that his gold watch is missing. It was a very expensive gift from his grandpa. David asks all his friends just one question. I can't find one thing that's very important to me. Can you tell me what you were doing yesterday? Monica says, I spent most of the day in my room studying. Mike says, I was practicing my electric guitar in the garage. And Mia says, I don't even know what your watch looks like. After hearing their answers, David knows for sure who's lying. Mm. Can you figure it out? There was a power outage. It means Mike couldn't play the electric guitar. Also, David said nothing about the important thing being a watch. So how did Mia know it? Therefore, Mike and Mia stole the watch. Can you create a square by moving just one matchstick? You need to think outside the box to crack this puzzle. Here's the solution. This square is tiny, but it still matches the task. Rob runs a restaurant. He has four barrels of excellent kombucha. He's saving them for the upcoming anniversary party, which will start in 24 hours. Rob enters the storage room and sees a note near the barrels. Oh. It says, I put a magic spell on one of the barrels. Anyone who drinks kombucha from it will turn into a mermaid in 10 hours. Good luck. Luckily, Rob has one friend, Shelly, Hello. who's dreaming to be a mermaid. Yes. Rob decides to test the kombucha on her before the party starts. Can you figure out a way to check four barrels in 24 hours? Rob should give Shelly kombucha from the first barrel right away. Then the second barrel's kombucha one hour later, and the third drink two hours later. If Shelly turns into a mermaid in 10 hours, it means that the first barrel is under the spell. If she changes in 11 hours, it's the second barrel to blame. And if she becomes a mermaid in 12 hours, it's the third barrel. But if Shelly stays the same, the fourth barrel is enchanted. A computer store manager calls the police and yells, Help me! My store has been robbed! The officers arrive at the place immediately, but they can't see anyone. Suddenly, they hear someone banging on the door in the corner of the store. They unlock it and see an anxious lady. It's the manager. Someone locked me in the storage room. It must be one of the shop assistants. Huh? The police officers ask the lady to call her employees for interrogation. The manager says, Just a second, I can't find my phone. Oh, it's over here. She didn't even start to call before the officers arrested her. Why? She was locked in the room, and the phone was lying on a counter. How could she call the police? Where does Friday actually come before Thursday? Take your time to think it over. Friday always comes before Thursday in the dictionary. Nina sneaks out of the house late in the evening to meet her secret boyfriend. She thinks that she's very careful and quiet, but all of Nina's roommates know about her plan. Also, they know that Nina will return at midnight. They decide to make a bet. The one who would notice Nina first, when she starts climbing the fence, would be the winner. This person would be free from chores for one month. To avoid falling asleep, Bella switches on her favorite series. Nora goes to the kitchen to make snacks for everyone. Wendy takes a seat in the living room with a book. And finally, Kelly goes to her bedroom and starts meditating. Who's going to be the first to spot Nina when the time comes? Kelly. Her eyes will be used to the darkness and she will see better than the others. Lily is a cool pastry chef. She's been working hard in the kitchen all night to create a special wedding cake. Finally, it's ready. Yeah. Lily puts it in the fridge and goes outdoors to take a break. Fifteen minutes later, she returns and nearly faints. Some monster had ruined her masterpiece. Lily questions three suspects. Diana, the barista, says, I opened the fridge an hour ago to grab a new carton of soy milk. Your cake was fine. Mm. Paul, the bakery's manager, says, I didn't touch the cake. I was talking on the phone with our clients. Mm. And Will, the janitor, says, I entered the kitchen five minutes ago and noticed some chocolate on the floor near the fridge. 
I opened it and saw the broken cake, but it wasn't me. Who's lying? Diana. An hour ago, the cake wasn't finished yet, so she just couldn't see it in the fridge. Mary parks her car near her favorite store. Can you see anything weird here? Take a look at the reflection in the window. The color of her car doesn't match reality. A small town hosts a winter festival with an ice sculpture competition. The top three sculptures made it to the final. The party goes well and everyone has fun. Oh no, someone has sprinkled the sculptures with salt. They're losing their shape and falling apart. The local sheriff interrogates three suspects. Brian says, I didn't do it, I was too busy building a snowman. Gemma says, I was far from the sculptures taking selfies with my granny near the dining area. See for yourself if you don't believe me. And Dan says, I believe it was Brian. Hmm. The winning sculpture was created by his ex-girlfriend. They don't get along. After hearing what they had to say, the sheriff knows for sure who's guilty. What about you? Take a look at Gemma's selfies with Granny. There's a large salt shaker on the table in the first picture. And in the second selfie, the very same salt shaker is absent. It's hidden in Gemma's jacket pocket. She sneaked the salt and ruined the sculptures. Amy is visiting an unfamiliar city. She sees four magical creatures in this area and freaks out. Can you see them too? Take a look at this tree. It's a wood goblin. There's a transparent lizard crawling up the skyscraper. Also, there's a leprechaun hiding in the flower bushes. And there's a pixie driving this taxi. Diana returns home from work and discovers that someone had broken her antique teapot in the kitchen. What? She gets furious and interrogates three suspects. The housemaid says, I was cleaning the second floor all day long. I didn't even enter the kitchen today. Hmm. The gardener says, I was picking lilies in the garden in the morning. I only entered the kitchen once to put fresh flowers in the vase. The teapot was fine. And the cook says, I was preparing dinner in the kitchen. And then I went to the bathroom to take off my uniform. When I returned back to the kitchen, the teapot was already broken. Who is lying? The gardener. Ooh. Take a look at the flowers in the vase. They don't look fresh at all. Bob used to be a farmer in another country. He kept chickens. Things were going well and he made good money. But then he bought a bigger farm in another country and moved there. Soon Bob got to know that floods are very frequent in this area. But he didn't give up and decided to breed ducks instead of chickens. Why? Ducks can swim, so floods aren't so dangerous for them. Here are three matches. Oh, really? Can you make a six out of them without breaking them into pieces? Who said the number has to be standard six? Hmm. The matches make a perfect Roman numeral three. So all you have to do is bring the bottoms of the first two matches towards each other, and you've got a Roman numeral six. You have two sand hourglasses, a 7-minute one and an 11-minute one. Using just these two sand hourglasses, how can you measure 15 minutes? Step 1. Start both hourglasses at the same moment. Step 2. Wait until the 7-minute hourglass times out. 7 minutes have passed. Let's move on to step 3. Restart the 7-minute hourglass. At this time, 11-minute hourglass will have 4 minutes left to time out. As soon as the 11-minute glass times out, invert the 7-minute hourglass. At this point, 11 minutes have passed. After inverting the 7-minute hourglass, it will now have 4 minutes left for time out. After these 4 minutes are out, the total time will be 15 minutes. Imagine you are being interviewed for a job opening at one of the world's largest companies. I'm talking about Google, Microsoft, or even Elon Musk's SpaceX. 
but to get your dream job, you have to pass a very tricky entry exam. I've gathered some of the questions that are actually used in these tests, so put on your thinking hat and don't settle for less than 100%. Good luck. We'll start out easy. The first riddle you need to solve is the two-jug riddle. Here's the drill. Your mother asks you to measure four cups of orange juice using two jugs. The thing is, you have a 20-cup jug and a 36-cup jug. How can you do it? You need to start by pouring the orange juice into the smaller jug. Then, pour all the juice from that jug into the 36-cup jug. This way, the empty space from the big jug would give you 16 cups. After doing that, you can fill the 20-cup jug using more fresh juice and pour that liquid into the 36-cup jug. This way, you'll fill the entire 36-cup jug. And what is left in the smaller jug is the four cups of juice your mom asked for. Clever, huh? Moving on to the second round. Say your room has three switches, and one of these switches is for the fan in the room next door. You cannot see whether the fan is on or off unless you come out of your room, got that? Okay, so I need you to figure out what's the minimum amount of times you need to go inside the room next door to identify the correct switch that turns on the fan. This is a little bit tricky, but here's the solution. The minimum amount of times you can go inside the room next door and still figure out the answer is one. Imagine you turned on the first switch in your bedroom and left it on for a bit. As soon as you turn it off, you quickly turn on the second switch and run to the room next door. If the fan is rotating slowly and is about to stop, that means that the first switch is the one that controls the fan. If the fan is running, then the second switch is the correct one. And if the fan isn't moving at all, then it was the third switch all along. Did you manage to crack this one? Hey, nobody said this was going to be easy. It's a mock job interview for a top-notch company after all. The third round is even trickier than the one before. An interviewer might ask you to solve this riddle to understand your pattern finding capabilities. Let's say you were asked to watch a six lane car track for the day. Your job is to spot the four fastest cars out of 36. How many races would you conduct to find that out? Here's what you could do. Conduct six different car races, grouping six cars per race. After you determine the winner of each of these races, you conduct another race with the six finalists. The winner of this race will be determined as the fastest vehicle of all. Then just place the second, third, and fourth cars according to how they performed in the last race. By the end of seven races, you'll have figured out the four fastest cars out of 36. Good for you if you figured this one out. For this next riddle, you need to think logically and mathematically. A queen needs to hire a worker for seven days to do a job for her. The queen pays in gold bars, but she must pay the worker every day at the end of his shift. If the queen is only able to make a maximum of two cuts in the gold bar, how can she pay the worker the correct amount of one-seventh of the gold bar at the end of each shift? Uh, let's see how this can work out. The queen makes two cuts in the bar, dividing it into three pieces. The first piece is one-seventh of the bar. The second piece is two-seventh of the bar. And the third one is four-seventh of the bar. After the first day of work, the queen gives the worker one-seventh of the bar as payment. On the next day, she gives him two-seventh of the bar and asks for the one-seventh piece in return. At the end of the third day, she gives the worker the smallest piece again. This way, he has a total of three-sevenths of the gold bar on his hands. Then, after the fourth day, the queen takes away the first two pieces and gives the man four-seventh of the bar. At the end of day five, she gives the worker one-seventh of the bar again. And at the end of day six, she gives the worker two-seventh of the bar and gets the one-seventh piece back. On day seven, she pays him with the final one-seventh piece and the deal is completed. Ready for the last round of the first level? If you've answered everything correctly so far, I dare to say you are a part of a very special group of people. 
Good luck with this next one. It will determine whether you'll move on to the second level. Two buses are driving toward each other at a speed of 40 miles per hour. They're separated by a distance of 40 miles. A bird is flying to and fro, landing on bus one and then on bus two at a speed of 50 miles per hour. By the time the buses come across each other, how many miles will the little bird have flown? Math lovers, this one's for you. The first thing we need to find out is the time it would take for the buses to meet. To find that out, we should divide the distance between the buses by the combined speed of both vehicles. If they're both driving at 40 miles per hour, then their combined speed is 80 miles per hour. Since the distance between them is 40 miles, we divide 40 by 80. This will give us 0.5 hours or 30 minutes. To figure out the total distance traveled by the bird, we multiply the speed of the bird by the time it will take the buses to meet. And this would give us 50 times 0.5. So the correct answer is 25 miles. Phew, I'm tired just thinking of that little bird flying all those miles. Hey, if you've aced this test so far, congratulations. You've just unlocked level two. The riddles will get more and more difficult, so keep your mind sharp. A tortoise is currently at the bottom of a 210 feet hill and is trying to reach the top. Every hour, the tortoise climbs 15 feet and slips down one foot. How long will it take the tortoise to reach the top of the hill? Here's the thinking behind this riddle. Every hour, our tortoise buddy climbs a total of 14 feet, right? Since it climbs 15 and slides down one foot. According to this, it will take the tortoise 15 hours to get to the top of that cliff, since 15 multiplied by 14 equals 210. This wasn't too bad, huh? Questions such as these ones allow interviewers to test your problem-solving abilities regarding numbers. You know, if you want to work at a space company, you should probably be very, and I mean very, good with numbers. This next riddle is one of Elon Musk's personal favorites. It's short, yet complicated. If anyone here dreams of becoming an employee at SpaceX, you better get this one right. Imagine you're standing on the surface of Earth. You walk one mile south, one mile west, and one mile north. You end up exactly where you started. Where are you? If you answered the North Pole, then you got it right. But the riddle doesn't stop here. If you weren't at the North Pole, where else could you be given the exact same instructions? Yup, the South Pole. Here's how this works. This riddle presumes that the world is a perfect sphere. And if that were the case, the only place where you could walk one mile south, west, and north, and end up in the same place is at one of the poles. Got it? To get to level three, you have to answer this riddle correctly. There are two strings in a room. All you know is that each string takes exactly one hour to burn. Your task is to time exactly 45 minutes, using the strings as your only source to find out the time. How can you do it? Here's how it goes. You should light both ends of the first string and one end of the second string. In 30 minutes, the first string would have burnt completely because it's burning twice as fast with both ends on fire. Then, you should light the second end of the second string. The second string would still have 30 minutes left to burn, but by lighting its other end, the rope will burn twice as fast, AKA in 15 minutes. Voila! You've timed 45 minutes without the help of any clock whatsoever. Hey, smarty pants, you've just made it to level three. If I were the interviewer, I would probably give you the job already. But just for the sake of it, be sure to answer everything correctly, okay? These final questions are way more job specific. As all questions in this video, they were used in real job interviews. So we're basically training you to ace your interviews. For example, if you were applying for a position at JP Morgan, this is the type of question you would have to answer. How many streetlights are there in New York City? Can you figure out the number before the time runs out?
As impossible as this might sound to guess the answer without a Google search, what JP Morgan wants to test is your estimating abilities. Here's the logic. New York City boroughs have an ordered urban grid, so your first task would be to estimate the number of horizontal and vertical blocks in each borough. Then, estimate the number of streetlights each block may have. Multiply that number by five since New York City is made out of five boroughs. And then you'll have your number. If it's somewhere close to 300,000, then you got it right. If you were applying for a position at a healthcare company, you'd be faced with this fruity riddle. An apple costs 40 cents, a banana costs 60 cents, and a grapefruit costs 80 cents. How much does a pear cost? Yikes. I had to read it a few times before getting any idea of what to do with it. The key to answering this riddle is to focus on the vowels. If you charge 20 cents per vowel, the two-vowel word apple will cost 40 cents. By the same logic, the three-vowel banana will cost 60 cents, and the four-vowel grapefruit will be 80 cents. In this scenario, a pair will cost 40 cents, and that's your answer. You've made it to the end of this test. Check your armpits. If you're sweating, that probably means you've done a very good job. To finish off, here's an interesting question a tech company asks their interviewees. How would you describe the internet to someone who has just woken up from a 30-year coma? Different from all the other questions, this one has no right or wrong answer. You might try to compare it with something that existed 30 years ago, for example. Or you might just go into Spielberg mode and describe this near sci-fi world we are living in nowadays. Either way, I hope you've got the job. Get ready for a tough but very fun riddles competition. Yeah! Take whatever helps you activate your logical skills. A magnifying glass, a deerstalker hat, or a notebook. And let's get rolling! Let's warm up with some easy stuff. Can you find a vampire among these emojis? Here it is. Ugh, creepy. How about this crowd of people? Can you spot a vampire hiding among them? It is this girl. Look at how sharp her teeth are. And one more riddle for you. Which of these people is a vampire? See those fang marks on the neck of that guy? He was bitten and has already turned into a vampire himself. Stephen was found unconscious in his living room on a Sunday evening. Someone had hit him on the head. The man was rushed to a hospital while the police started questioning the suspects. There were three of them, Stephen's ex-wife, his neighbor, and his younger brother. Hmm. Stephen's ex-wife said she'd been walking in the park with her little niece all day. Stephen's neighbor said she'd wanted to go on a date with her boyfriend, but since it had been raining heavily, they decided to stay at home. Hey. And Stephen's younger brother said he'd been at work, finishing a large project. It was so important he had to work even on weekends. The police figured out who the attacker was quite fast. Can you do the same? It was Steven's ex-wife. It had been raining heavily all day long. Who would walk in the park with a little kid in such weather? A criminal has kidnapped your friend and tied him to a tree. A huge, vicious dog is guarding this tree. You need to save your friend at night. But when you come to that place, you only have one piece of meat with you. It's not big enough to distract the dog for the three minutes you need to cut the ropes and help your friend escape. How can you solve this problem? Cut the meat into small pieces and throw them all over the garden. And while the dog is distracted, set your friend free. One day, Amy went on a date with her boyfriend Joe to a nice restaurant. Yeah. Joe gave her flowers and candy. They had a great meal and enjoyed the date. But in the morning, Amy woke up with a severe allergic reaction. Oh. 
She went to the hospital, where she was told that she had been poisoned. But to figure out what antidote Amy needed, it was crucial to understand the source of the poison. The detective invited to investigate the case questioned everyone who could poison the girl, her boyfriend, the cook, and Amy's friend Cindy. Joe said that they'd eaten the same food in the restaurant. The cook said that he had brought Amy her pizza, and it had been freshly made. And Cindy said she thought Amy's boyfriend had poisoned her. She added that he had asked her what flowers Amy liked to gain Amy's trust. Have you realized who poisoned the girl? It was Cindy. Have you noticed the book on her table? It was about poisonous flowers. She advised Joe to give Amy flowers that would cause health problems. Ah. One company organized a betting game where one red and one blue marble were placed in a dark box. If a player picked the blue marble, the company had to pay them $5,000. But if the player guessed it wrong, they had to pay the company $100. The company cheated by always putting in the box two red marbles instead of one red and one blue, but no one could prove it. Mark was observing people lose one after another. Then he took part in the game and won. How did he do it? The man picked a marble and quickly put it in his mouth without showing the thing to anyone else. The remaining marble was red. According to the rules, it meant that Mark's marble was blue. The company had to pay him the money. Now, you need to pay attention to every little detail. Can you figure out whose dog it is? Look at that guy wearing a red jacket. See that leash he's holding? It matches the dog's collar, so most likely he's the owner. This parrot has managed to sneak away from its owner, and now the vet is looking for them. Can you say whose bird this is? The owner is that woman sitting on the couch. There's a cage behind her. Another waiting room at the vet. And whose sphinx cat is this cutie? See that guy waiting for the doctor to bring back his pet? He's surrounded by lots of furry animals and can't stop sneezing. He must be allergic to fur. That's why he got himself a sphinx kitty. And whose horse is this? See that girl standing in line? She's the only one wearing riding boots. She must be the owner. These kids seem to be terrified. No wonder. See that white rat darting around the classroom? Who does it belong to? It's that girl who's checking her backpack. You can see a cage and some rodent food inside. Ah, oh, look at this cutie. What do you think? Who does this mini pig belong to? This guy is the owner. His outfit matches the scarf the pig is wearing. How sweet is that? And whose hedgehog is this? This lady is the owner. She's wearing special gloves to handle the animal. Yes! And who does this absolutely adorable pug belong to? Its owner is this guy. If you look attentively, you'll notice a pug tattoo on his leg. Lily came home and saw her favorite vase shattered. Extremely upset, she exclaimed, What's happened to my vase? Her husband Sam explained that around lunchtime, he heard a loud crash from their bedroom. He rushed there and saw that Lily's expensive vase had been broken, and a robber was running away. Sam followed the man outside, but his glasses got foggy because of the cold weather. That's why he missed the man. Lily called the police, but after police officers heard the whole story, they refused to investigate this case. Why?
glasses fog up when you enter a warm place, not vice versa. Sam invented the story because he was afraid to admit he had been the one to break the vase. Oh. Emma's husband Liam knew his wife had been dreaming of going to an archaeological site. One day, she told him about the perfect opportunity. There was a remote site ready to be excavated, but there was no internet or network connection there. She would have to camp in a tent with almost no modern conveniences. But since she was really excited about this trip, Liam was ready to wait for her at home. Two days later, Liam received a message and a photo from Emma. The man got furious. He realized Emma had been lying about the whole thing. How did he understand it? Before leaving, Emma told her husband there was no internet connection or cell phone reception there. Then how did she manage to send him the photo? Several bank workers visited a canteen in their office building. Since it was the riddle day, Matthew, Isaac, and Wyatt were served tea, and Hunter, Christian, and Nathan drank coffee. What drink did Aaron get? Aaron drank tea simply because of his double-letter name. A man with a bandage around his head came to a police station. I was hitchhiking when a car stopped. The driver asked me to check if one of the tires was flat. I bent over to look, and he hit me on the head. When I regained consciousness, I found out he had taken all my money and smartphone. I only remember that the guy had a big car, large eyebrows, and a mustache. Soon the police had a suspect. They found him in a cafe, but this man said it couldn't be him. He changed the tires on his car two weeks ago. And since then, the car had been parked near the cafe, but the detective realized the man was lying right away. How? There's a no parking sign near the cafe. No car could be staying there for two weeks. Isabella is standing behind Mia, but at the same time, Mia is also standing behind Isabella. How is it possible? The girls are standing with their backs turned toward each other. Mrs. Red was a big boss in a large company. Recently, she hired a few new employees. One day, her assistant was filling out their documents and found something strange. What? She informed Mrs. Red that one of the new employees seemed to have fake documents. But the boss was in a hurry and told the assistant that she'd have a look at the papers the next day. Yeah. But the next day, Mrs. Red found out that her assistant was in a hospital, unconscious. Oh. Someone had attacked her on her way to work. Mrs. Red hurried to check the new employee's documents. Look at them and try to figure out which ID is fake. This ID card claims that Edward is 34 years old, but the man using this document is way older. Oh. It was an extremely hot day. Police officer Black was driving along a countryside road. Suddenly, he noticed a hitchhiker on the side of the road and stopped to give him a ride. The man explained that he had been waiting for someone to pick him up for more than two hours and offered the officer some ice cream. Black refused and asked the guy about a gang of criminals who had just robbed a jewelry store. The hitchhiker exclaimed, I've just seen a red car speeding past me. Must have been the robbers, but they were driving in the opposite direction. We'll need to turn back. Black didn't believe him and took him to the police station. How did the police officer guess the hitchhiker was a criminal? If the hitchhiker had indeed been standing on the side of the road for two hours, the ice cream would have already melted. So, he lied to lead Black the wrong way. Oliver has in mind one of three numbers. One, two, or three. Charlotte is allowed to ask him just one question to figure out which number it is. Oliver can answer her question only with no, yes, and I can't say. Which question should Charlotte ask? She can say, I have the number one or two in mind. Is your number larger than my number? If Oliver answers yes, it means he's chosen three. 
If he answers, I can't say, the number he has in mind is 2. And if he says no, his number is 1. Several people were asked to step over a pencil lying on the floor, but none of them managed to do it. Why? The pencil was placed near the wall. Who doesn't like Rebus puzzles? They're fun, and I've got a few tricky ones for you. Enjoy! What does it mean? It's misunderstood. Try to crack this one. So we see pot and eight O's. Together, they make potatoes. And how about this one? That's high five. A small hint. The arrangement of these letters is important. This rebus means, hurry up! And one more puzzle for you. What could it mean? It's a friend in need. A hungry vampire is following you on a deserted street one dark night. Suddenly, you see a house with its door open and hide there. The vampire can't enter your shelter, but is patiently waiting outside. However, you still have some hope. There are three tunnels leading out of the house. But inside the first tunnel, there is molten lava. The walls of the second tunnel keep closing every 10 seconds, crushing everything that gets inside. And the floorboards of the third tunnel collapse every 5 seconds, sending everything lying on them into an abyss. What should you do? Just wait till the morning. Vampires can't stand daylight and your pursuer will have to leave you alone. Yes!